Grade 7 Math, number 12.4a, Experimental Probability and Qualitative Predictions. I'm going to go over the definitions real quick, as I promised in the last video. A trial is each observation of an experiment. So if you were going to flip a coin, each time you watched the coin flip would be a trial. The outcome is the result of the trial. Was it heads or tails? An event is a set of one or more outcomes. So an event would be flipping the coin three times to see which one landed the most. Probability would be the likelihood an event will even happen. And the sample space would be the set of all the possible outcomes of an event. So if you rolled a die, it would be, the sample space would be one, two, three, four, five, six, because those would be the choices of what would come up on that die. Or on a coin, it would be heads or tails. That would be the sample space. The complement is all the outcomes that are not included in the event. It's the opposite of the outcome. So if we were trying to roll a three, the complement would be one, two, four, five, six. It would be everything except the three. A simple event would be there's only one outcome for an event, like if we're going to toss a coin to get heads. And a simulation is the model of an experiment that would be difficult to actually do. And as I keep saying, it would be like testing the Mars rover. They had to do a simulation in the lab because they couldn't build it and test it on Mars itself, okay? So we can use experimental probability to an approximate the probability of an event. We can figure out the chances that the event will even happen. We compare how many times the event happened to how many times we tried to make it happen. A qualitative data is data that deals with qualities. It's not precise. There's more variance in the data. It's like how blue is the sky. If you ask somebody how blue is the sky and then you ask someone else how blue is the sky, you're going to get different feelings of what they think the qualities of blue are. Or if you ask someone how delicious is pizza, you're not going to get the same answer from everybody, okay? Smaller, more focused samples are needed. So that's qualitative data. That is feelings, okay? Quantitative data deals with quantities. Systematic investigation and scientific methods are used. It provides objective, hard facts. How old is the roof on the house? Well, you can say the actual date and how old it is because you would have, you know, a receipt or something of when the new roof was put on or how much money is in your pocket. You can actually count it. So those are numbers that can be actually proven and counted. And the qualitative ones are more feelings and qualities of it, like how blue is the sky, okay? So we can make predictions using experimental probability by writing an equation to find the likelihood of an event. We use the likelihood to make the prediction. So remember, qualitative is quality, like feelings, and quantitative is quantity, like numbers. Now, in general, making a prediction, Emma found that the experimental probability of her bowling a strike, knocking down all the pins, was two tenths or 20%. Out of 25 throws of the bowling ball, how many strikes can we predict she'll make? So method one would be to use a proportion. 2 tenths is equal to x 20 fifths. So we could do it this way and say, what does 10 need to become 25? It needs to be multiplied by 2.5. So we multiply the numerator by 2.5, and that's 5. So x equals 5. Or we could go this route and say 2 times 25 and come across is 50. So 10 times what is 50? And then do it that way. See? We'd still get 5. Now method 2 would be to use a percent equation. 20, 0 0.20 times 25 equals x. Because we know 2 tenths is 20%, 0.20 times 25 equals x. We would do this equation and come up with 5. We find 20% 20 of 25. We can predict 5 strikes for her next 25 throws. Is that exactly what she's going to get? Can we prove it that that is exactly what she's going to get? No. So that would be qualitative, wouldn't it? So making a qualitative prediction, a qualitative prediction helps us decide which situation is more likely in general. So on average, the patients from a dentist's office cancel and reschedule their appointment about 8% of the time each week. So the receptionist decides that 10 patients will cancel and reschedule out of 172 appointments next week. Is this prediction reasonable? 
Did she make a reasonable prediction based on the percentage? Well, 8% is 8 out of 100, 8 one hundredths. So 8 over 100 is equal to x over 172. So what does the 100 need to be 172? It needs to be multiplied by 1.72. So we multiply the 8 numerator by 1.72 and get 13.76. See? So that means x is equal to about 13.76, which would be the average number that will reschedule out of the 172. All right? So here's method two. We use the percent equation, equation 0 0.08 times 172. And that would also be 13.76. OK? See? Now the receptionist prediction was low, and the number of patients would be a whole number, so we would actually round that up to 14, because you can't have 76 one hundredths of a patient, can you? No. So because she guessed 10, her guess was low, and it would actually be more around 14. Now, does anyone know for a fact that 14 people will reschedule? No, it's a qualitative prediction. Based on what some patients did before, it could vary greatly, and it's not precise. Now, why would a dentist's office care if so many reschedule? Well, it would leave many open appointments, and the office wouldn't make as much money as they thought they would, would they? What if it was a beauty salon, and the beauty salon was really trying to pay their rent? and they saw all the bookings they had for haircuts and perms and uh, hair color, and they said, oh, with all these appointments, we're going to be able to pay our rent. And then a bunch of people canceled. Then they wouldn't make their rent, would they? So it would kind of be important to a business to know this information, okay? So we're going to talk about experimental probability and quantitative predictions next, and we'll see the difference, okay? I hope this was helpful. I hope you understand now, and I'll see you there. Bye.